today. Let us pray. Father, it is only you that can gather a man together to seek your face. No man can approach your throne of grace except you bid him to come. Father, we ask today in your mercy, Abba, Father, that you accept us into your presence in Jesus' eternal name. That as the word come forth today, Abba, Father, let it not be man speaking in the name of Jesus Christ. That the Holy Spirit, through his unction, would speak through us today. That he will meet your children at their point of need today. We cover every mind in the blood of Jesus Christ. We cover every thought today in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, let no thought exalt itself against your knowledge today. Father, speak freely. Speak to your children today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You see, sometimes the devil does God's job. Why am I saying this? It takes adversity for some of us to begin to seek this father with a sense of urgency. You see a kid, a kid never know how difficult it is when the sun is shining until the father takes the umbrella away from this kid and this kid will feel the direct heat upon his head. I remember going to Florida two, three years ago and we were in this um, bus, you know, like this tall bus you have in, in, in Manhattan. And we were just driving through downtown Miami. And the way the sun was penetrating my head, even if I had hair on, but the way the sun was penetrating my head, I couldn't believe the sun could be this hot. So I made up my mind that I cannot live in an area like Florida. But you see, I had to run downstairs to the bottom bunk to remain under while the others were, you know, excited about the, the glamour of the neighborhood and so on and so forth. What am I saying today? My apostle spoke about the fact that Jesus was in a boat with the disciples and Jesus was sleeping in the bottom bunk and the wave was blowing left right and center and then man even the disciple thought I can handle this situation so it's just the wind it's just the storm but when they noticed this storm is now blowing into the boat now it's about to sink the boat that's when they went to the maker to tap the maker. Don't you care that we die? You see, children, just as we are, we think we've got all the knowledge, we've got all the understanding so we can handle it. So we don't need Jesus. We don't need any person to help us. But then, when Jesus begins to relax, and allow Satan to do the work that Satan does because he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Then the sense of urgency hits you, and guess what? You start to cry. And then when you begin to cry, there's a resolve in you that says, Ah, I already know without this God, I'm going to die. So you begin to seek him even more. As you are seeking him, he's giving you little drops of that water and it's dropping on your tongue and you are getting a little bit of sustenance and then he's pulling you more into himself you're getting a little bit of sustenance and then after a while it's like now the water begin to gush and begin to overflow you see my pastor was giving a testimony on friday about going through 10 years of affliction 10 years how many of you can tarry for 10 years, going through affliction, praying day in and day out. And the way the apostle is giving testimony about his wife's fervency, I'm kind of jealous in the sense that, oh, am I this fervent? Or is it because now I have rest? Is that why I'm not as strong, I'm not as fervent as I used to? She came out of that affliction. Today, my apostle said sometimes when she is sleeping, he will try to tap the next side of the bed. And guess what? The wife is not on the other side. Where is she? She's either in the basement or in the living room praying in the middle of the night. Now you can imagine you going through that 
and you've resolved in your mind that ah, if I die, I die, but I'm going to stick to this God until He answers me. I'm only preaching to the choir in here. Yes, most of us have resolved in our mind, we've resolved in our thoughts that we're going to seek this God. But let me also express a foundation that some of us are not taking advantage of. God says man ought to pray without season. There is a reason he's telling you man ought to pray without season. Even Jesus himself, he is a God of God and a man of man. Jesus will leave the crowd and go and hide in the mountains and go and hide in the wilderness to seek his father's face. Who sent him in the first place? the father now jesus has sent you out as disciple i don't want to believe anyone sitting here you're just a chair warmer i don't want to believe anyone sitting here have not experienced the power of god in their life you see a brother the other day the lord opened up his eyes to see ah defeating enemy in front of him he felt comfortable oh all right, the enemy is gone. Now I can go back to my old ways. It took the affliction rising again a second time for him to begin to cry, woe, woe, woe unto me. Let us go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 from verse 15. It is not out of the abundance of your wealth or not out of the abundance of your understanding. It is out of the abundance of your constant supplication to the one who sent you in the first place, to the one who created you in the first place. Let us open from Luke chapter 12, from verse 15 to 21. Permit me to read. He said, and it said unto them, Take heed and beware of conversiousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, A proud, the proud of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruit? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bonds and build greater, and then will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to myself, to my soul, So thou hast much good. Lay up for many years. Take tithe, I mean, take the, thy season, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then, who shall those, I mean, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is it is that led not treasure for himself. It is not riches towards God. Sorry, I, I, I still have to take my glasses sometimes. You know, sometimes I keep denying myself that I... You know, you keep uh, denying the fact that you need your glasses. <laughs> Forgive me, guys. Um, I'm still living in, my <laughs> in the old glory. <laughs> 21. He says, so is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Brethren, how do you become rich towards God? It's a constant tarrying and praying without season. Man begin to lay treasure for themselves here on earth and this treasure will decay. There is a reason why God wants you to keep laying treasures in heaven by praying, by seeking his face. 
Because our foundation out of our mother and our father has already been usurped by the devil. It has to take a royal priesthood, a royal priest that has no blemish in his blood. And for this priest to avail, remember Prince Joshua. Joshua, Prince Joshua can only approach the throne of grace once in a year to seek God. And then Prince Joshua by default is already a sinner. And then as he came into the presence of God, came into the holies of holy, Satan was already standing by his side to accuse him before the Father. Imagine Joshua came in with a sense of arrogance and said, I'm a priest, so I really do not need to seek this God and then present himself. Know that this God is also a consuming fire. That when you approach his throne of grace with dirt on you, you are consumed instantly. But Joshua had sin, had iniquity, and devil was ready to accuse him before the Father. I stated earlier, it always the devil is doing God's job. Because if the devil do not torment you, the devil do not come against you, you will not have this urgency to seek God. There will be no urge in you to fight. There will be no urge. Some will fight and they will fail because they quit, they quit even before the answer comes. But Joshua stood and Satan was right there accusing him. He took the father rebuking Satan and said, Be quiet. Is this not the one that I plucked out of fire with my hand? Joshua had to be plucked out of fire. So my brethren to you, my question to you, are you going to remain those that are praying and then when you don't see the answer, you quit? Just like Jesus will remain inertia for a minute just to see how much you want to cry. How much you want to seek him? Do you really want me? Remember the ten folks that Jesus healed. The others went away. Only one came back to say, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Many of us, we are doing this. I'm using Brooklyn as an example. Brooklyn, that church, as small as it is, you call it a storefront church. That church manages business in deep water. What am I saying? You will see those in a mega church who are so comfortable with cushion chair. Their pastor cannot even cast out their demons in them. But they are running to a small front church to come and get deliverance. Guess what? The moment they are getting their deliverance, they are all sure. You see them hike up and back to their, small, to their, to their large church to listen. It's all about maturity. It means you think this God is not looking at you, but he is. A day is going to come that he will speak. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, let us go to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. I just want to point out to you, even Jesus who is God, he said it is by the word of God this earth was created. And Jesus is the word of God. When you go to Revelation chapter 19, you see where it's written there as Jesus being the word of God because it's written upon his forehead as the word of God. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Let me read. He said, who in the day of his flesh, when he was offering up prayer, and supplication with strong crying and fears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Even Jesus, with strong cry, offer praise, offer prayer to his father that his father will come and avail for him to deliver him from death. You remember Jesus going to Gethsemane. How do you see him? Do you see him as a man who was afraid to approach death? Or did you see him as a man who was bold 
and came out. And the guards that were sent to come and pick him up, they fell back. Went, oh, that is Jesus. And they fell back. Because they couldn't believe, is this the same Jesus that everyone is talking about? That we're coming to arrest. They fell back. Jesus came with the glory that the Father has empowered him with. Because he met with his Father. And his Father used his angels to empower him. To approach the will of his Father. Although he cried, he was troubled. He said, Father, if it is necessary, take this cup. Let this cup pass me. But rather, let thy will be done. I'm going to use my pastor again. Who among you will be able to wait for 10 years with affliction and you will constantly remain? Some of us, after one year, we don't see an answer. Oh, this doesn't work anyway, so let me go back. Or... Oh, it doesn't work. You see them, oh, I felt a little bit more comfortable. I felt some relief with the devil. So let me go back to the devil and get that relief. But guess what? You've already tasted the beauty of God. And the fact that you walk back, it's going to be ratchet even higher than what you ever encountered. So brethren, no man is greater than prayer. You can never be greater than your prayer. Because the one that created you have already set a map for you. And that map, you must fulfill that destiny. Regardless of what your foundation is saying against you. It is only when you come to the Father that the Father will now reveal the road map. So you can be able to walk through that road and get to the final destination that he has destined for you. But some of us are still walking around. We are wallowing. And we are running here and there. And we still cannot discern where we are supposed to be. Brethren, do not tarry until it's too late. Begin to increase your prayer life. Amen. The day I got my deliverance, I knew that day. I still remember that day. And I thought... What happened? You know the feeling of, okay, I'm expecting it to happen again at night. I didn't see it. I'm expecting. And then after a while, you know, I started acting like, hmm, the confidence is so there. Oh, they're never going to come. And that is the truth. They're never going to come. But guess what? I left that little window without praying. You know, like a child who's been hungry for a minute and you gave him candy. And the moment he finished that candy, he's back to playing again. I kept playing. And I kept feeling all comfortable. It took me coming into this ministry. It took me going to um, the previous ministry, into this ministry, for me to start planting understanding. You can be under a good teacher and yet you will not receive. It takes the Spirit of God for you to begin to receive. It takes you beginning to seek your Father to pray more. Because He's only the one that can empower you with the power to pray. Praise the Lord. So even Jesus Himself had to seek His Father so that He'll be able to perform the will of His Father to precision. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us go to... John chapter 10, verse 35 to 40. Mortal men heard the word of God, and they kept calling them little God. It is at the entrance of his word that will bring understanding to you. But guess what? When we pray sometimes, I ask you, are you praying the word of God or you're just praying your own? Because the own is going to say, oh, Father, I want this cake today. I want this chicken today. I want this food today. I want this today. I want this today. But are you going to pray what the Father is putting in your mind? There are things your Father wants to deposit in you that requires the Spirit of God to reveal these things to you. And when you're praying, you're not praying a limited prayer. You are praying limitless prayer. Limitless prayer means, Father, let your Spirit remain in me. Father, let the spirit of understanding remain in me. Sometimes when we are praying in Brooklyn, and I see myself praying, and there's this 
intensity to keep praying. And I wonder, where is this understanding coming from? Because I never used to pray this way till I came to this ministry. I will pray half done and I'm comfortable, I'll move on. Maybe because I have already overcome. So the afflictions are not there anymore. So there's no need for me to pray harder. But now when I moved in here, I noticed there is a need for you to pray. Not because of your want, but because of the want of your father in your life. Praise the Lord. So John chapter 10 verse um, 34 to 35. He said, is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, whose, whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. So those that the word of God entered into became little gods. Now for you to be little god means you are already planted in Zion, where the light of God is constantly upon you, illuminating every darkness around you. Because sometimes you will not even know that you have darkness around you until your father illuminates light upon those little darkness that you think they are not there. And then you begin to pray pertaining those darkness and moving them completely away from your life. So brethren, I want to ask, who sent you on this mission that you are on? Who sent you? When you go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, Jesus is the one that holds the seven stars in his hands. He is the one that sent you. He said, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Brethren, the gates of hell is speaking loud. But are your feet going to remain upon this rock so that you will never be moved? Because he's the one that walks between the seven candles. And as he's walking through, he's looking at your attitudes, looking at your ways, looking at your direction. If he who sent you out was crying on the day he was heading to the cross, he took his father empowering him, that should spark a light in you. That you must tarry more in seeking your father who is in heaven who seated up high and looked down low upon you that you will humble yourself on a consistent basis to seek his face and dwell in his presence brethren i rather remain praying more than preaching why am i saying this because i can preach but i'll be preaching of myself i can speak but I'll be speaking out of my own regular mind. But imagine after praying that the Father deposited his word in me, that as I deliver the word, I will not be a cast away after I have delivered the word of God. Amen. You must choose not to be the one that is cast out after you deliver. He said many will be called, many will come, including you and I. And out of those ones, a few will be chosen. I would rather be among the few that is chosen. And how am I going to be among the few that are chosen? By seeking the Father's face. So that I will not be lost in the crowd. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So my prayer to you today, brethren, just like Jesus will do. Jesus will escape from the crowd. Go and hide in the mountain to seek his Father. When Jesus was making decisions about his 12 disciples, Jesus tarried overnight praying in the mountains, in the wilderness. It was after he finished praying, communing with his father, seeking his father, says that he came down from the mountain to select the 12 apostles. You and I, I'll ask you a question. Every one of you that have a lover, you have a friend. Who would you rather spend time with? If you do not pray, sorry for me to make this profound statement. If you do not pray, go and mark it. You do not love your father. Amen. You do not love your father. Amen. Because it takes those who are in love with something. Imagine you have this fancy car. And I see some people polishing their car like it's <laughs> a glory. How can you be polishing an inanimate object? And then you're standing far to look at it. You can imagine you are glorying in that object that is shiny, that is a metal. 
Then let us move it to your father. Yes, yes, let me come. And I'll shine my father's feet. And I'll look at my father and I'll just glory before him and magnify him and exalt him. That he, in turn, now will deposit his goodness in me. If Jesus has not seeked his father, Jesus has the power to heal, to forgive sin, to cleanse out iniquity, to make you whole. But Jesus, out of his obedience, out of his obedience to his father's will, always go back to his father to get nourishment, communing with his father, hearing what the father is saying. We have this adage in my hometown that a man, a child, that has no father, right, will go and hide to the corner just to hear what a, man, a, a, a boy that has a father will say. He will be getting the wisdom from the one that has a father. And the one that has a father will not even value his father. He takes the fatherless, the fatherless son gaining wisdom from the one that has father to grow. So brethren, your father in heaven is the father of the fatherless. Amen. The God of all. I would rather tarry before him so that Satan will not make me a cookie in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That the Father in heaven will empower me with the ability to make Satan remain under our feet. Do you know Satan has not been placed in the bottomless pit yet? He's still roaring around like a roaring lion. You need your father's hand to hold on and carry this to the final step. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word today. Father, I've spoken your word to your children. Hallelujah. Father, make them Abba Father. Begin to tarry before you. Father, fill them with a thirst that only you can satisfy today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, begin to open up signs and wonders into their eyes today that they will behold wonderful things Abba Father and yearn for you more in Jesus' Christ's name. Mighty Father, we thank you. Be thou exalted in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That word was for me too. Praise the Lord. I digested every calorie available in that word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we close our meeting, we have sufficient time for prayer. It's never enough time though for prayer. But I want to encourage you here. You're in this house, and the Lord wants to use you in ministry. Make yourself available. God wants to take you to a higher plateau. I want you to seek his face this week. Seek his face. Seek his face. He has given you some gifts. Your spiritual gifts are a pointer to how God wants to use you. God will not give you a spiritual gift that has no connection to your destiny. God will not give you a spiritual gift and you will just keep it under the, under the bed. It's to be used. So discover your spiritual gifts and say, Lord, how do you want to use me? The Bible says, a man's gift make it room for him and brings him before kings. There are some of you, your gift will feed you. Your gift, Joseph's gift fed him. I know a brother is always saying, oh, I'm looking for a job, I'm frustrated with my job, my job, my job. I said, but God has deposited something in you. You see it. So I want you to go this week. Go before God. I say, Lord, how do you want me to serve you? And when you ask God that question, it always involves people. Always. Ministry is about people. Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men, people. So God has given you a gift. Maybe the gift he has given you is to encourage people. Maybe you are a son of encouragement. Begin to build that gift up in you. Begin to build that gift up in you. Polish your gifts. If you know you have the gift of encouragement, polish it. 
Say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to smile. Not, I'm here to encourage you because the Lord gave me the gift. So I'm going to encourage you now. Holy Spirit, teach me how to carry myself with grace. We must raise the bar. We must raise our standards. Your job as a believer is when you go into an environment and you see the standard. Say, Lord, how can I raise it higher? Not how can I meet the standard. How can I raise it even higher? So when you come and you see the standard of this house, and the Lord ministers to you that the standard of this house is not at, at par with where you're coming from, let God use you to raise it up. Don't criticize it. Raise the bar. You're a leader. We must see ourselves the way God sees us. We must see ourselves the way God. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God created you to do great exploits. Those that know their God shall do great exploits. When last did you do a great exploit? We must be Christians with a difference. This thing we are preaching is real. It's not a joke. It's real. But many in the world think it's a joke. Later they will find out. Hopefully it won't be too late. This thing is real. Let God use you. Oh, glory. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your word that came out. Indeed, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. Lord, we thank you we've received your word. Lord, we thank you that men ought always to pray and not faint. Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, give us the spirit of prayer. That we will be intercessors, prayer warriors. Oh God, that we will tarry and travel in prayer before you. That we will seek your face with prayer and fasting. That we will not relent in prayer. That you will give us the faith, oh God, that is persistent till the very end. We thank you, Abba Father. Lord, make us stronger believers. Lord, stronger believers, strengthen us in the faith that we will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we will be identified with you. Lord, we want our primary identification to be you, not our nationality, not our degrees and discipline, not our profession. If we are known, let us be known because of you. We lay everything, every other thing down at the cross to follow you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us rise to close the meeting. Hallelujah. Let us rise to close. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again as we go into this week. We commit our week before you. Lord, that in this week, your favor will go ahead of us. Your glory will go ahead of us. Your power will go ahead of us. That doors will open for us in their own accord. Oh, Father, we pray that in this week you will give us the grace to walk in obedience before you. Father, we pray that in this week you will use us as witnesses. You said we shall receive power to be your witnesses. That in this very week, oh God, we will witness for you. Lord, that our lips shall not be sealed. That the devil will not put a leash on our mouth. Amen. Oh God, that as we call upon your name, we will share you with a dying yes, world. Lord. That will be a light unto the world. Oh God, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel. Oh God, that the light of Christ in us will shine. That men will see, oh God, our good works and give glory yes, to your name in heaven. Lord, use us this week. Lord, use us, oh God, that we will not be idle. We don't want to be idle Christians. We want to be Christians. That share the love of Christ. Amen. We thank you, Abba Father. Our Father, we ask that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit will rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The saints